Hello everybody, welcome back to another life story. This life story is very interesting. The House of a Thousand Creatures. You ever see the movie House of a Thousand Corpses? Well, this is a movie... movie. This is a house. Sorry, this is a house of a thousand creatures. So, I was born in 2006, and let me just say we moved out of this house in, I think, 2012. And the things that were wrong with that house are just... You, you name it, there's, wrong with, there's something wrong with it. Let's start off with the builder of the house. The person who built the house was an imbecile. He was a buffoon. He didn't know how to build the house. There was wood panels on the sides of the house that animals could easily crawl, crawl into. And then he did something wrong with the gutter of the house so animals could get in through there. So um, animals could get in there. Any number of animals could get in there except big ones, of course. But um, let's start off with the smallest animal, the or insect, uh, uh, animal, whatever, carpenter ants and um, termites that love to chew wood. They love to eat wood. So that was not good for the side panels of the house or whatever um, and stuff like that. So carpenter ants and uh, uh, termites. Sorry, I forget um, the other ant. But then we had um, squirrels. There was, ha there was trees by uh, our house that squirrels could easily jump in, jump to our roof. So we had that to worry about. Um, we had mice, uh, not rats, mice that uh, could get in through the loose wood panels or whatever um, and stuff like that. And then I remember one day I was getting ready for a daycare or kinder care or whatever because I was like five. Um, and then I saw a mouse crawl under the couch, and I told my dad and uncle about it, um, and later that day, um, we caught a mouse in a mouse trap, and we could, and the mouse traps worked very good, and we put peanut butter and stuff in there like that to lure them to, lure them to the mouse trap, but, um, <laughs> let's talk about the, uh, raccoons next. The raccoons were probably, uh, uh, the best part about this story, I want to say. So, raccoons. We all hate them. Um, they could be rabid sometimes if you see them out in the daytime. Um, so they got in the attic somehow, probably through the gutter or whatever. They probably got in through the gutter. Um, and then they were living up in our attic. And we would hear them constantly. We would hear them scratching and stuff like that. And the ceiling was weak to begin with. The, the builder, once again, messed something up with uh, the roof and stuff like that. So, like, it was very weak and uh stuff so then we were, would fear that the raccoons would uh get through the ceiling and they were above all of our bedrooms pretty much zeps my grandmother's and my father's and mine um so we would hear them all night and stuff like that and zep and i completely understand this i don't blame him whatsoever he had a fear of raccoons and he still does he still hates raccoons to this day and i do not blame him and he would hear them up in in the attic in the middle of the night as he was trying to sleep. And he would be in utter agony um, because he would be terrified that if he did fall asleep, he would be worried that the raccoon would land on his head in the middle of the night. And of course, everyone else had that fear too. But um, I did forget to mention the ants. We got rid of the ants by laying out poison and stuff like that, baits, so they bring them back to the queen and it wipes out that entire family. And that did work. Um... There were no ants soon after we laid bait out and stuff like that. Um, what else? There's a thousand things with there. The squirrels I mentioned. Raccoons, of course. Oh, raccoon stories. How could I forget? So, um, uh, we hired an exterminator to catch for the raccoons. And he would lure them out somehow and capture the mother and stuff like that. But then that one mother, there was one mother raccoon who was too smart. And, um didn't fall for the trap. I'm telling, telling you, man, animals are much smarter than we think they are, man. Do not underestimate any animal, if, no matter how small they are and no matter how big they are. They are smarter than we humans, uh, like, assume them to be. We assume all, all animals, mostly, are dumb. They're, they don't know what they're doing. But that raccoon knew what it was doing. It didn't fall for that trap. But then, of course, we laid out another trap. Uh, so, like, it would peek its head out the hole or whatever, um, 
I guess, wherever it came in through, and then the exterminator put a trap there. So it would stick its head out of the hole that it got into and stuff like that, of how it got up into the attic, I think, and the trap closed on the mother's face. <laughs> and um, it was still alive. It was still alive. And then I think something happened where I think it, like, I forget. Somehow, it either, it either fell through the ceiling and uh, landed on the floor. I think, or some, something happened like that. Um, um, and my dad had to put it out of its misery by putting a BB gun bullet in its head. Um, and then the baby raccoons were left alone. And so they didn't know how to fend for themselves, feed themselves. So for the first like couple nights, for like 36 hours... Uh, most two days, I think, we were, were here, the baby raccoons, a baby raccoon's leg, sorry, that's from a movie quote, if you can guess that movie quote, if you can guess the quote from the correct movie, a baby raccoon's leg, down in the comments down below, I'll give you a shout out, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here, um, that's from a movie, but, um, uh, so we killed the raccoon, and then baby raccoons, um, we would hear them squealing and stuff like that, like, because they needed food and water and stuff, and then it stopped. We can assume what happened to the baby raccoons, but then one baby raccoon fell through the ceiling again, um, and my dad had to put it out of its misery. Um, another raccoon for the second time put it out of its misery. Um, as much as I hate raccoons, and as much as my dad hates raccoons, he does say sometimes, or he does say that he did feel bad killing those raccoons because they would squeal on the ground and stuff like that because they were dying. Um, he did feel bad for it, and I feel bad for it, too, because, uh, the noise he would imitate, I, I wasn't there for it, um, he didn't, I didn't see him kill the raccoon, but the noise he would make would make me feel bad for the raccoon, it'd go, and so, it, it was sad to hear that noise, but, um, he doesn't like killing it, raccoons or any other animals, which is good, of course, um, but, um, what other animals, oh, let me tell you this story, so, uh, the exterminator would catch the raccoons and put them in these cages. And Zepp hated raccoons so much, he got like a stick or something, I think, and went up to the cage that the raccoon was in and started hitting the cage. And the raccoon was like hissing at it, squealing at it and stuff like that. I think it was the mother raccoon. Um, it had to be, actually. But then there was, uh, woodpeckers. There would, you know, since our house is made of wood mostly and stuff like that, the wood p planks on the some wood sidings and stuff like that, the woodpeckers would hit the wood, of course, and go... It would keep us up at night because there was a thousand things wrong with that house. And then our uh, tool shed out back. Uh, we had a backyard, of course, and then... The, I think I moved my ring right there. Sorry about that. Um, the, we had a tool shed out back, and then Zepp discovered that there was a beaver family living under their uh, shed. And then we were worried that, like, there were beavers were to chew through the wiring of to, and they would just, like, destroy the house's power. So um, we had a fear of them chewing through the wiring um, and messing with our house. So then uh, Zep took down the shed. Um, he took it down completely. So the beavers had no uh, nowhere to live. Um... So I covered the raccoons, ants, squirrels, beavers. Oh, that, oh! Let me tell you some. The raccoons. Back to the raccoons. The decomposing bodies of the baby raccoons up in the attic would make maggots and attract maggots and stuff like that. And of course, maggots turn into flies. And then we had a fly problem. I mean, if one thing led to another with that house, it's a thousand things wrong with that house. And then the uh, ceiling was built wrong, like I said before. So rain could uh, easily go, or easily damage uh, the roof, um, and we were, we were worried that the ceiling would collapse and stuff like that, so that was worrisome. And then we called our friend uh, Jeff Kelp over, who was good at building things and stuff like that, and repairing things, retaining walls and ceilings and stuff like that. So he tried to fix the ceiling with a tarp and stuff like that, the roof. He tried to fix the roof with a tarp. Um, that, that, I don't think, worked. Uh, that wor worked, wor work, I can't speak, worked, sorry, I don't think that worked, so then we just decided, you know what, we're moving, we're moving, and we did move in 2012, um, so yeah, that was the house of a thousand creatures, insects, animals, 
things like that. So let me think real quick of anything else that was wrong with that house. So I think that's it. So we had raccoons, beavers, woodpeckers, two types of ants, carpenter and a uh, termite. I can't even think of it. Um, like I said, beavers, um, squirrels, um, raccoons, of course, flies, uh, a terrible ceiling, and just things among things. So that was the house of a thousand creatures. Thank you guys so much for watching this life story. If you liked it, comment, like, and subscribe. I love you guys. See you in the next one. Stay safe out there. Peace.